Hey YouTube, it's Maddie the Empty Nest Scrapper. I'm so glad you stopped by. If it's your first time, welcome. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you're returning, I'm so glad you came back. So today I'm going to do another deep dive into my color binders. These binders are what I use to keep track of the inventory in my craft room. And if you have difficulty keeping track of what you have, it may be something you're interested in. I just started doing it a couple of years ago and I try to keep up as best I can. It helps me in my crafting and it definitely helps me in my spending. The last time I shared some of my inventory, I already shared what was in this color binder and it is uh, pigment powders, sprays, alcohol ink, all of my ink pads, uh, my Nuvo drops and embossing powders and perfect pearls so I'm not sure you can see this very well but I have them separated into categories in the book and I'm not going to review it again I did also share that I have a separate binder for um, my inks where I separate them out by color and not by brand. And that is super useful. They are in two inch pockets that I can pull out and bring over to my project. And it is time consuming, but absolutely useful. So um, for this next part of the deep dive into the inventory binders, this is my second binder of uh, colors. It is a small six by eight binder. It's just a white Avery binder. I picked it up on um, Amazon and then just put a uh, Dollar Tree. I cut up a Dollar Tree gift bag and decorated it on uh, both sides. And uh, that works fine for me. So I originally thought, silly me, that I would be able to fit everything that I own in one binder, but um, you know as well as I do when you first get started what you imagine and what actually transpires once you start shopping and crafting are two different things. So this is the second binder. This is actually the third binder I will share and I do have two more. So for today I'm just going to review the colors and first the categories. So here I'll tilt it over for you so you could hopefully see the categories a little bit better and what I have in here. So this is uh, separated into four sections and um, you could probably see it better than I can right now because I'm sort of reading it backwards. Um, I know that I have markers in there. Next up, uh, pencils, water soluble crayons and paint. So I'm not going to take too too much time but I will give you a little bit of an overview. On this first set of pages um, I started out with uh, the zigs. So these are the zig clean color real brush um, markers. They call them markers but they're really paint in a brush and I have a set of 24. I did fight internally to not buy the full set, which is enormously expensive. Um, and what I did to help myself with that is to remind myself that these are watercolor paints in a brush. And I could absolutely mix any color I wanted to if I want to expand um, this collection. I use them from time to time. I don't use them a whole lot. I do enjoy them. I like the brush. I'm glad I have them, but I really want to shy away from just picking up the full set to uh, satisfy some imaginary syndrome that I tell myself I shouldn't have. Um, and in that same line of trying to keep my spending in check, for some bizarre reason, on the recommendation of a very prominent YouTuber, I picked up the Arteza Real Brush pre pens, which is pretty much the same exact thing, 
but less expensive. Now, this would have made sense if I didn't already have the zigs, but I did. But I saw someone who said, this is great. And uh, so I picked up a larger set for a lot less money. And now I have more colors, but really um, didn't need to even pick this up. If I didn't have these, I would have picked these up instead. But truthfully, I like the brush on the zigs better. They are smaller and easier for me to get into small spaces. So for the zigs, I just scribbled on and uh, I had downloaded a pre-made sheet uh, that uh, was offered online. Here I had to type up my own. Um, and what I did here was lay down some of the ink and then add water to give an example of what it looks like watered down. Um, it's useful, but uh, very time consuming. I think that the examples I have of the zigs just straight up is enough for me. Again, same idea. These are the color it um, version of those markers. So they are paints in a paintbrush and uh, you color it on. Color it is a little unique because these markers that come in a lovely set of 24 are refillable. And I don't know of any other marker that of that kind that is refillable. They are lovely and in fact, I won them on uh, Lindsay the Frugal Crafter's website when she did a review and auctioned them off. And so I don't have to feel bad about having too many. <coughs> These are the examples of my Tombos. I have quite a few and they are lovely. Same thing, full strength and then water. These I believe I typed up myself as well. Um, that's the last page, all the Tombow. Next set of markers I have are alcohol markers made by Spectrum Noir. I pulled down uh, what they show as their uh, color range and then I have the matching how it really looks. I did print it out on their website and the um, markers that I have are the illustrator markers there, a little bit on the pricey side. Um, and I thought they were exactly what I was looking for because they are brush tip on one side with um, a fine tip on the other. At the time, nobody else had that combination. Um, <laughs> since the time I bought these, they came out with a newer version of the same marker with a much better brush nib, which I wish I had. And I had just finished collecting what I thought was how many I wanted to have. I contacted the company and they did not stand behind anything. They would not replace the nibs. They invited me to enjoy my frayed markers and I was not happy about that. Here we have the Pasca pens, and those are acrylics in a marker, pretty fun. I've swatched them all out here and here. These are metallics um, and uh, pastels. So uh, what I did was just scribble it on a piece of cardstock, punch it out and adhere it to a sheet that I had made on my computer. Uh, last but not least, the Kareen markers. So these were a gift for the holidays recently. I played with them a little. I swatched them out immediately. Um, I printed out this swatch sheet and I'm super excited to play with them more. Next up, I have pencils. These are... Um, my selection of Prismacolors. As you can see, I printed this out from the internet. These are Derwent Intense watercolor 
pencils. And so these, if you lay them down, they are pencils. And if you add water, they liquefy into watercolors. And um, I did add water to these samples to see, um, to see uh, how they would look. And uh, the one thing you should know about these, supposedly, if you're using them in your art journal, once they dry, they will not move. And uh, so you, you won't get mud. So if that's something you're interested in, these pencils, I believe, are the only ones that will do that. Next up, I have my water-soluble crayons. I do have a problem with these. I have way too many. Not sure why. I may someday do a comparison of some of these because... Uh, Maybe I'll find out that one thing does something different and I'll find a reason to have been so insane and collected them all. These are Faber-Castell uh, gel sticks, both of them. These are the metallics, these are the regular. Um, and I picked them up because Lindsay the Frugal Crafter said they are just as good as gelatos, which I have a selection of those also. The these gelatos and gel sticks, I also printed these out, typed it up on my computer as well. I made a sample, punched it out with a circle punch and adhered it to what I had created for uh, my inventory. Next up, the Chiron Dash. These are professional level watercolor crayons. They are pigmented and lovely and uh, Everybody who owns them loves them. I really had no need to spend this kind of money, but lo and behold, I had it on my holiday gift list a couple of years ago, and I am an owner of the Karen Dosh. I also picked up the Prima oil pastels. Same thing, you lay it down, you add water, it liquefies. I thought I wonder if the oil pastels are different from the other types of crayon. Is the fact that they are oil pastels different? I don't know. Like I said, I may do some comparing, but here we go. Last up, the Stablio, I think that's how you say it. Um, these are like a kid's uh, craft item. Um, I saw Marta on Marimetti Small Art demo these and they look fantastic and they are i love them i go to these all the time i don't know if they're better than the others they are big and chunky and i love to play with them last but not least way too many paints as well these are the delusions paints that come in the glass jar which i hate i am moving to um decant them into the bottles or replace them with the bottles that they now come in. These are the Dina Wakely um, acrylic paints. These are both acrylics. Um, and these already come in little bottles, so they're delightful and fun to use. Here are my watercolors. Pretty excellent. These were a bargain basement paint recommended by Lindsay the Frugal Crafter. If I would have got these and stopped, there would have been absolutely nothing wrong with that. I don't need anything more um, professional than these, but I'm me. And so I also have the Van Gogh set, which is a student grade. And I also have the Kurataki Ganzai Tambe because another crafter said that these were the ones to get. Um, and then I tried some of these metallic paints because everybody seemed to be getting them all over YouTube. These were inexpensive ones made by Prima and I barely have used them at all. So that's my embarrassing collection of colors. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, subscribe, and give a thumbs up. Stay safe, everybody.